If you were wondering how I made my latest movie The Night is Dark, this video is for you. The too long didn't watch version is I took a bunch of photos and I put them together in a video. And now the longer version. Indeed, the shots that you saw on the video are not really videos, they are made of individual still images, anywhere between 150 and 300 for each of the shots. First of all, let's talk about location. We're gonna need to do some scouting. I didn't have to because I can't. We are under quarantine, so I'm limited to the farm and what's around it. I was still able to find some very compelling subjects. That's the tree I used for my opening shot. I made a few shots of those trees and that one. That one was pretty cool. And I like this one too with the shadow of the tree. But this one right here was my favorite by far. In any case, the scouting might have to be done during the day and during the night. During the day, because of course you can see your subject much better. And during the night is because only then you can see how they are gonna be lit. Some subjects like this house right here might seem perfect during the day. I tried, I wanted to make this shot happen, but unfortunately at night there is a light right there which makes the house too bright. The contrast would be too high between the building and the sky. There are plenty of old houses and structures that are falling apart around here, and I found them very fitting for this project. As you saw, all the locations had a few things in common. They had a subject in the foreground, be it like an old house or the trees. Those subjects could take a quarter of the frame or even three quarters of the frame, and the rest was for the sky, for the stars. Another thing to keep in mind when choosing the location is the position of the stars. You might want to be at least aware of the position of the most important star in the sky, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere, that is the North Star. The North Star is the only star in the sky that is gonna be fixed the whole time, and every other star is gonna be circling around that one. You can point towards the North Star to capture that spiraling movement of the stars, or you can point towards the opposite side where the stars are going to be moving much faster. If you live in the southern hemisphere I think you need to look for something called the south cross but you might want to double check on that. In any case when we want to find the star in the sky we can use an app there are plenty of them for both iOS and Android. I'm just going to show you the one I used just to recommend one but I downloaded this one just for this video I'm going to delete it afterwards. It's called Sky View Light. It's free. You can either point it to the sky will you see like a view of the stars in augmented reality fashion and you'll see their names or you can search for a specific star in this case the North Star. Once we know where we're going to be making that shot, we need to know when. It almost goes without saying, but if we want to capture the stars, we need the skies as clear as possible. This doesn't only mean no clouds, but also as far as possible from any kind of light pollution like cities or towns. Another source of light pollution is the moon, so it would be great if we could make this happen on a moonless night. I'm pretty sure you already have a way to check if the skies are gonna be clear, to check about the moon and when total darkness is gonna happen. I use an app that I've talked about many times in this channel and it's called Sun Surveyor. It has a section called photo opportunities and one of those photo opportunities is when there is no moon. Okay, let's talk camera gear really quick. You're gonna need a few things. The first one is a camera and a lens, of course. You can do this with almost any camera that offers you any kind of manual control. I use my A6500, I'm using it to record this video now, but the A6000 would have done exactly the same job. And I use this lens, the rocking on 12 millimeters, and I used it because it's wide, I wanted to capture the, the scenes as wide as possible. It's a fast lens, it's an F2, and most importantly, it's a manual lens, so I was able to lock in the focus to infinity, and I knew that the stars would be in focus. That is a little bit harder to do with the newer lenses, more modern lenses that I have, 
they are focused by wire so it's kind of hard to uh, focus on the stars but with this manual lens that was uh, very easy to do of course these are photographs taken in low light so the bigger the sensor and the faster the lens the better but almost any camera can do and to prove it to you last night i decided to use my rx100 mark 5 this is a much smaller sensor than this one but it has a fast lens a 1.8 i was good enough to create this shot So as you can see, you don't have to use fancy gear for this. Another piece of gear that you might need is an intervalometer like this one. My Sony cameras, none of them have uh, this feature built in, but I know that plenty of cameras do have that feature nowadays, so you might not need this at all. I had to use it though, and thanks to this cable, I didn't have to wait next to the camera for 45 minutes at a time. And the last thing you're gonna need, of course, is a tripod. Okay, so let's take the photographs. These are gonna be exposed at regular shots. So what I do is a series of test shots until I find the right composition and the right settings. Just to give you an idea, I've used exposure times between five and 10 seconds. Aperture, the lens is wide open, F2 and ISO between 400 and 1600, depending on the subject that I have in front of me. Another thing to remember is that the stars are moving in the sky all the time and they move faster than you would think. So don't use exposure times that are too long, more than 10 seconds, because you're gonna start getting lines instead of dots. That's fine if you're looking for star trails, but it's not what we are looking for here for the video. Okay, so the composition and the settings are ready. So now we engage the intervalometer. Luckily for me, the house is right here, so I'll just go inside and wait there for half an hour, 45 minutes. Again, just to give you an idea, it took me five nights to make that video. I took between three and four shots every night. So it was between three and four hours of photography every day, but it was a lot of fun. You can use any software you want to edit your images. Then just export them and drag them into a video editor like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, or Windows Movie Maker. Set a duration of one frame per photo and that's it. I used Lightroom Classic instead because it can export that video directly. This is how I did it. First, we edit the photo. It's a very simple edit. We just need to make sure that the subject is visible and the stars stand out enough. Then we copy the settings over to the rest of the photographs. Now we go to Slideshow. Here we are gonna need templates to export time lapses. Adobe provides a few of them. Those are the ones that I used. I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below to download them. I used the 15 frames per second template because I didn't have enough photographs for a higher frame rate and because I really like the look of it. Now we only need to click export video and that's it. If you want to know how I made the Star Trail images and videos, I have an older video about it. Basically, I use free software called Star Stacks. It's very easy to use, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. Of course, if you have any questions about this whole process, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer that question. I want to thank all of you for the very kind comments and words that you had about the movie The Night is Dark. I'm glad you liked it. I really had a lot of fun making it. I hope you enjoyed this video too. Thank you so much for watching again and see you in the next one.